Now, commenting can be a make or break for your coding success, especially if you're working on a team, on an open source project, or on a project you plan to work on long term. Comments, just as you expect, are a way to leave comments within your code in a human readable format so that you know what's going on in different parts of your code at all times. Sometimes, you'll write out extremely complicated code that makes perfect sense in the moment, but when you return to that code months later, or give it to someone else so they can add on to it, it may be really difficult or a ton of wasted time trying to reverse engineer the code. So let's take a look at how to use commenting in two different languages, because I think it can be really helpful for you to see how they compare and contrast, and plus, you'll pretty much learn two languages at once. So on the left is the language C Sharp using the IDE Visual Studio, which should interest you if you want to do Windows development or make games using a popular game engine called Unity. And on the right is the language Python 3 using the IDE Visual Studio code, which should interest you if you want to get into more general programming or data science. Alright, so here I have two brand new console projects, and if you don't know how to make a new console project in either C Sharp or Python or both, be sure to check out the video in the description. Uh, it's called How to Install an IDE, and at the end of that video I'll show you how to do that. Alright, so the first thing I want to go over is line commenting. So over in C Sharp and left, I'm just going to remove these two lines that come stock with every new C Sharp project. and I'm going to start creating a little fake project. So I'm going to initialize a couple of floats. Um, we'll call this location X. Uh, I'm just going to do 12.345F. And then I'm going to do another one, float location Y. I'm going to do 123.456. All right. Oh, F. Sorry. All right, so these variables are just going to act as fake coordinates for a little example. So I'm going to create a more involved Boolean. I'm going to say bool in, oops, in position, let's say in pause equals, and let's do uh, location x is greater than, I don't know, let's just say 12, right? And then we'll also check if, if location y is um, less than 30, for example. Uh, but then outside of that, we'll also check or if I'm about to go off screen here, um, I'll scoot over or if location uh, X is greater than location Y. And then we'll put a semicolon. And now we have a more <laughs> involved Boolean. All right, so here we have maybe one of the greatest examples of how line commenting is pretty useful, or can be pretty useful, rather. Um, I'm going to go on top of our Boolean here and just going to do uh, forward slash forward slash. And that right there, it starts our comment. And we can write whatever we want. So I'm just going to do my best to explain what this Boolean does. So if location x is greater is greater than 12 than 12 and location y y is is greater oh no less than less than 30 or if location x x is greater than location y y then we are in position. Sorry, it's a bit long and it doesn't exactly fit with the rest of the code, but that is how you write a line comment. And the way it works is when your code is compiled, anytime that the compiler sees a double forward slash, it knows to ignore everything after it. So it just pretty much will go to the next line. And over in Python, it's a lot of the same. I'm just going to do loc, oops, loc x equals 12.345 and then loc y equals 123.456 and then I'm going to do uh, in pause equals let's see loc x um, is greater than 12 and um, what is the loc y is less than 30 uh-huh or um we have loc loc i already forgot x is greater than 
x is greater than loc y. Boy, that was brutal. <laughs> And to add our comment, I'm just gonna come over here above our in position variable. And instead of doing forward slash forward slash, that form of currency is not accepted in Python. I'm gonna hit the pound sign or the hashtag, whatever you call it. And then I'm just gonna write out our message. So I'm not gonna write it because that's gonna take forever again. I'm gonna copy it from here and then paste it. And there we go. Comment and comment. Sorry, I just realized the Python font should probably be a bit bigger. So I'm just gonna make that a bit bigger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's one use case for line commenting, probably one of the most useful cases for line commenting. However, you can do something else as well. So let's say that, you know, we try out this Boolean and it just isn't working right for, for whatever reason. Well, we can do a line comment on everything after the assignment operator and then just put like, for example, equals one just to make sure that, oops, we actually need to put like true here just to make sure that this boolean is actually working <laughs> just for example and then in python it's a lot of the same you just do hashtag everything after that's ignored and we just put true oops true oops no semicolon and yep that's another use case that can be quite handy as well when debugging your code and so the final use case I want to show you with line commenting is let's say that we're going to return these back to that assignment and let's come down here and then let's add an if statement so if in position right we want something to happen however we don't exactly know what we want to happen yet we have an idea maybe maybe we don't know how to do it maybe you want someone else to do it well what we can do here is just add a comment on like here I want to display something you know some notification I don't know I just want to display something here and you can leave this comment here maybe come back to it later maybe give it to a friend maybe do some research and then you know learn how to do it and then implement it this comment is just an easy way for you to you know know what your intent was with putting this if statement there and in Python it's really similar but a little different so let's say we do our if statement if in position um, we'll come down here, we can write our comment, which I'm going to again copy and paste, copy, paste. However, we can't leave it like this. You see, if we hit save, we'll have a problem, which is uh, we have a parsing error, uh, a syntax error rather. And the reason is because if you do, a, if you do an if statement and then you, ha you indent, which you have to do, there's there's nothing when it runs as if statement it's not going to run anything and that's a syntax error in Python so we can just simply put like print um, you know zero for instance uh, just so that it it clears that syntax error and technically speaking you don't even have to do a print for example you can just do like empty quotes whoops you can just do like empty quotes and that will work just the same, but it, it has to run something within the indentation um, because again, this line is ignored. All right, so that was line commenting. Next, I wanna talk about block commenting. So to demonstrate, I'm just gonna get rid of all this code that we just did and then oops yeah and then i'm going to let's just say that you're, you're creating some like complex algorithm that you quite understand but you kind of don't understand um so i'm just going to create something <laughs> this is just a representation for an, an advanced algorithm just use your imagination uh let's do look y divided by equals four right and then we need to return it or something like that so we'll do look new equals um look y divided by loc x for example oh i have to initialize that this is not python uh floats and then finally let's just return it let's do um let's do this uh console oops console dot right line right line uh location new all right so let's just say this is some advanced algorithm and you just implemented it in your program, but all of a sudden, like everything's broken. Nothing works anymore. You're like, what's going on? This isn't behavior that I expect. Uh, I know that this is working right. This is obviously, you know, very straightforward, but maybe this part of the algorithm isn't working right. Now, 
you could, you know, go by and do like, you know, forward slash, forward slash, forward slash, forward slash. And if you have a bunch of these, do that line by line. But one really convenient way is to use block combing, which in C sharp is just one forward slash and then an asterisk. And you have to end it doing the opposite. So an asterisk and then one forward slash. And that is one way that you can quickly comment a whole block of code. Now, one really important thing to take note of with block commenting is that you have to have a start and you have to have an end. Because if you don't have an end, what happens here is that it comments out everything after it, including the brackets. And if the brackets has a start but it doesn't have an end, you're going to get a bunch of errors. So they, all, they always have to have a start and they always have to have an end. Now in Python, I'm just going to replicate our super advanced algorithm here. I'm going to do loc x. Uh, times equals two and then loc y divided by equals four and then we're going to do loc new equals loc y divided by loc x then we'll just print it because why not loc new and to add block commenting in python it's similar but also very different um, what I mean by that is you want to come up to above wherever you want to do your block comment and just do three single quotes. Um, and again, it needs a start and it needs a finish. If you do not have a finish, you are going to get a syntax error um, because it needs a start and a finish for the triple quoted string literal, <laughs> a.k.a. the block comment. Now, the very last type of comment that I want to go over is summary commenting. So to demonstrate, I'm just gonna get rid of all this code. It is no longer needed. And then I'm just going to initialize a float variable. Let's call it uh, loc equals zero, for example. Next, let's create a quick little function. I'm gonna go outside of our main function and then do static float. Uh, let's call it ret uh, one. And then let's, uh, let's pass in a float and then we'll call our float A, just to make it easy. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to return a, let's see, A plus one. That's what we're going to return. Um, and then let's just use it real quick. So we'll do um, loc equals uh, ret one, and then we'll just pass in itself. So it's gonna plus one to itself, and just to prove that, we'll do console dot right line, even though it's not about proving in this, it's really about comments, but we'll just do that anyway. Console dot read key. Uh -huh. And then I will hit the play button. And boom, there we go. Zero plus one equals one. So our function works, but let's say that, you know, it's later down the line in, in your project and you come back to the script to upgrade or fix something. And you see that loc equals ret1. What does that do? And you go down to the ret1 function and let's say this is a lot more complex. You don't really understand what's going on. Well, you might waste a lot of time reverse engineering to figure out what that function is. Uh, but what, sol what can solve that is by adding a summary comment. So adding summary comments in C-sharp is actually really easy. All you have to do is go right above whatever function that you want to add a summary to or method and just hit backslash, backslash, backslash. It will autocomplete if you're in Visual Studio. You can just fill in whatever your, your summary is. So I'm going to do plus one to the input. Now, if I go over the ret1, you'll see that now there's a little description there that tells me exactly what it does. It pluses one to whatever the input is. The input is loc, so it's going to be loc plus one is what it's going to return. Simple, easy, and to the point. And they also have some other variables that you can fill in. You can fill in like whatever the parameter um, a is, you can put out what that is for, you can put out what it returns, and in the right context, it will display that information for you as well. And over in Python, I'm just gonna get rid of everything and set up our scenario real quick. So loc equals zero, then we need to do def ret one, and then we need our a input, and then uh, let's see, return, oops, return a plus one. And then we just simply do loc equals, uh, what is it, ret one, and then pass in loc, and then we can print 
loc out and then we don't need a input. And just to prove that it works, I'm gonna hit play up here and you see that we have a one. Now to add summary comments to Python methods and functions, all you have to do is go right under the method or function in Python and then hit three single quote characters and then another one. So you pretty much block comment and then you just type whatever the function is. Uh, I'm just gonna pop, copy this because I'm lazy and then I'm gonna paste it here. And so now if we go over here, it shows you what it does. Definition ret one, it pluses one to the user. I'm sorry, to the input. And then we can add more if you want, like A equals, you know, float, for instance, just more information for the user. And that's pretty much all this to it. And there you have it, guys. That is pretty much everything you need to know to get started with programming in terms of commenting.